So transitioning a little bit, NBA season coming up. How much did you play into the fact that the Trailblazers had a very good offseason? What were you doing? Were you recruiting? What's going on here? Because you guys had a very good free agency period. I wasn't recruiting. I'm done. I'm retired. Uh, Mello was the last player I recruited. <laughs> um, and I got him like five years later, so it worked out. But no, I was just enjoying time with my family. Um, congrats I, on the wedding, by the way. You know, we just, you just got congrats. married. Congratulations. Okay. Lehigh. Lehigh. Living my best life. I'm having a, I'm having a, a good a good 2020, a good end of 2020. Working out, trying to get ready for the season, and then just, you know, Surprised, just like everybody else. You know, oh, we signed who? Oh, that's cool. You weren't surprised. Don't lie to us. You knew that Covington trade was coming. I did it. I did it. Uh, I talked to our GM almost every day, but I just give advice on players that I like. I don't tell. I don't tell them what to do. Like that's not my job. My job is to hoop. You ask me about a player, I tell you about them. I'll even circle players that I like on the free agency list, and then it's, from there, it's up to you. You do your thing. Like I don't. I'm not the guy that goes in and says, I have to have this guy. No, it's like, these are the guys I like. These are guys I think will be good for us, but do you? Like, you I, talk- like, I like Trevor Ariza. Like, so I would never like be like, yo, yeah. get your right. Like, I'm a Trevor Ariza fan. Yeah. So, like, I, don't, I, don't go to the, I don't do those things because I'm, I got relationships with my teammates. Yeah. But if you're having a convo with the GM every single day, how come you're not breaking some news on Twitter? You got those journalistic chops. Uh, I, I also uh, – enjoy my job and the relationship that I have. <laughs> <laughs> the, guy that, the guy that's paid me hundreds of millions of dollars on multiple occasions. So, like, I can't uh, – Let's talk about the flex real quick. You said multiple – give you one tidbit, though. Multiple little, occasions. Little nugget of morsel. Multiple occasions. Let's just recognize that, CJ. Multiple occasions, $100 million. I love that. Facts are facts. You know? Facts. <laughs> Let, let's – My guy. But I'm not uh, – you, you know what you can do and can't do, and some things are better left unsaid because – it's not, it's not often that some of the things that we try to do are executed. You know what I mean? Some teams back out at the last minute. Things can happen. Yeah. So you just never truly know until, until Woj tweets it. We saw, so that they, with, we saw that with Dwight Howard. My bad. We saw that with Dwight Howard over the past few days. Yeah, I was just going to quickly ask, though, CJ, did anything surprise you about what your Blazers did? The Ennis Canner one, I wasn't expecting that. I knew there was a chance that we, we needed to back up uh, center, especially if Whiteside wasn't resigning. So I knew – there was a list of guys that we were going to target, but I wasn't sure we'd be able to get him. I didn't, I didn't think Boston was going to get rid of him. So that was, that was surprising. Um, Jones, that was surprising. Um, I know we wanted to be more athletic. We wanted a defensive guy. I think he kind of, he checks those boxes. And I thought Melo was going to resign. I mean, I, I talked to him pretty often, but I just wasn't sure. You guys are deep. You guys got like a lot of depth going into this season. I'm looking forward to it, man. We just got to stay healthy. You know, we missed Rodney Hood, uh, Rodney Hood last year. Oh, we missed Trevor in the bubble. Um, but we just got to get off to a better start, stay healthy, look forward to Zach returning. And then we'll have a lot of depth in our front court. We were very thin uh, last year, super thin. That's why we ended up having to bring Melo in. Uh, it ended up working out for us. But hopefully we can stay as healthy as possible. And some of the younger guys will get more chances to kind of develop and play alongside veterans and, and kind of go from there. Well, I mean, it can't get any worse, though. I mean, your injury situation last year was comical. It was – Like, that's was, just, like, bad luck. At what, it's like you, you guys were, like, the bad luck injury team last year. It was rough, man. It was some rough <laughs> the times where we, we would show up uh, to shoot run and we wouldn't know who was playing. So, it would be like, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll figure out the starting lineup. So, <laughs> we'll get to the arena later tonight because we didn't know who was I'm sure Nurk is happy that you, like, Canner's back because Nurk was having to play so many minutes in the bubble – near the end there he was just running up and down the court I felt yeah. bad for him he was like I didn't even mention Nurk. like we missed him a lot and now like being able to have two big men you know who can who can play inside outside are smart can make plays and to be able to you know Nurk can play 30 minutes some nights he can play 25 and hopefully we can have some blowouts this season we haven't had a blowout in <laughs> Seven years, but maybe we can blow some teams out and get some rest in the fourth quarter. It'd be nice to, to get a, a warrior like fourth quarter where you get to sit out and kind of relax. But you know, we, we just got to continue to build, and that's the biggest thing build together, get that continuity going. And 72 game season, so you got to get off to a good start. Was there any free agent thing across the league that had you guys like texting each other, like very surprising? I think the Trez one was like one where a lot on the outside people were like, oh wow. Gordon Hayward, Trez. I was surprised Trez went to – well, that was more of a mm-hmm. – more, more of a what? 
<laughs> that was a fuck you move. But, uh, <laughs> but just because Trez is the sixth man of the year, you know what I mean? You wouldn't, you wouldn't, no disrespect to some of the other players that have gotten eight to 10 million um, recently, but, you know, he's taken nine and a half million. He's the sixth man of the year, average, what, 19 and eight? And then his teammate, you know, 15, 16 million a year. Like, you kind of know where his scale is at. He took, he takes less money to go to a state with, with higher taxes to play against his old team more often than they're playing the same arena. But he's also having a chance to compete for a championship. He's also with clutch. So there's a lot of stuff that goes into that. And I'll never count another man's money, but you also know people's value. And he's definitely more valuable than nine and a half million dollars. So I was surprised. I was surprised that Gordon Hayward, when he opted out at 34 million, I knew he had to have a bag on the table because uh, yeah. any man with a, with a smart woman in their life is not turning down that type of money unless they got more money coming in. And <laughs> obviously, you know, got a smart, smart s- circle around him. And I'm trying to think who else. Char- Charlotte was definitely a surprise. I don't think anybody saw Charlotte being the team. I think the Knicks were a lot of, like the one that people thought was going to be that team. Yeah, and in the end, I thought he was going to go to the Pacers. Yeah, but yeah, go home. Detroit is spending money. Yeah. They, made, uh, they, they certainly what, made some moves. Yeah. What, no, no, no. What the moves. hell is Detroit doing is the, is, <laughs> is the accurate question. That's, that's what we should be asking. What the fuck are they doing? That's your words, not mine. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, we get it. We get it. Bro, bro you're going to be guarding Jeremy Grant at the two next year. <laughs> yeah, when you're just going to Detroit. <laughs> you're going to have to guard Jeremy Grant. <laughs> Jeremy Grant at the two. Jeremy turned down that money from Denver. He said, it's time for me to go. <laughs> he, wants to be, he wants to be the focus of what, the offense. What, what are you thinking about the West right now? Because – you know, CP3 on the Suns, like, a, there's a lot of – obviously, the clay injury just sucks so much. Like, that's trash. That's trash. Man. It, it really like sucks. Dude. He's such a good dude, too, man. You hate to see. Man, 17 months of rehab to go back into rehab. That's – I feel for him, man. But you just never know in the NBA, man. There could, there could be a team like OKC that plays well. You know, like what CP did last year. Obviously, the Suns will compete. They showed that they can compete in the bubble. You had a guy like CP – you know, you're going to be good. You had Aiton to start the season as opposed to him being suspended. So I think there's a lot of things uh, that will help them. Who knows what Sacramento is going to do. Um, Utah, I mean, everybody everybody is going to compete. It's just a matter of getting hot at the right time. I think some teams got better, some teams got worse, some teams stayed the same. Uh, you just want to be in a position to peak at the right time and then get into the playoffs healthy. I don't know what the Rockets are going to do either. Well, I mean, we see you retweeting, <laughs> re- retweeting the Russell Westbrook trades that obviously aren't going to happen. Yeah, so you're going out to Houston. You're going to kick out of that one? Oh, I see. Well, that just didn't make any sense. But some of the <laughs> trades are pretty funny. Like, I think it was what, you and Zach Collins for, for Westbrook? Yeah, it was like it's a bad deal for everybody involved. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it made no sense. It made no sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but people are crazy. I think they just say things sometimes for ratings. And – um I mean, I think everybody's curious about Houston. I mean, my man Zion here as a Nets fan, you know, he's he's hoping that they they pull the trigger on the on the Harden, you know. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think um, they're going to trade him there. I think he's going to end up staying. Would you give up a player with two years left on a deal? Who's your best player? But you have to get a superstar back for James Harden. You can't just get a bunch oh, of you know role players. Here. I like Levert. I like Dinwiddie. I like Jared Allen. I like the picks, but. For Houston, you went all in on James. You you brought in James, like his preferred players. You don't trade him this fast. Don't you have to ask for Kyrie in return? Yeah, for Kyrie, I would do it. I mean, yeah. I mean, but that's a non-starter for the. It's not going to happen, thing. but you yeah. have to ask Very for a superstar level player. I mean, I mean if, you really, if you really want James, yeah. I mean, I think a lot I of people saw it. I think a lot of people saw you guys get Covington and were like, "Oh, this is the start of." of the teardown, you know? And then it just, it kind of didn't happen. There's no way he wants to return to that roster. Um, yeah, it's going to be very interesting. I want, I wonder where, where Russ goes. I thought Russ was going to Charlotte and then they draft Melo. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to the Knicks. Then they signed Austin Rivers. Austin getting 30 shots up a game next year in the, in the Knicks and the garden. And he's going to give some epic post game in my interviews. Can't wait. <laughs> Austin's going to love being in New York by himself. Oh, he about to go out. Oh, he about to go out there and go to work. He about to be yeah. him and Julie. I, I hope so, man. That that fit with RJ Bear is gonna be mm, two Duke guys. I'm a Duke fan, you know. But oh, we love Austin though. That's a, that's that's our guy. But I will say this: Duke players are interesting NBA players. 
Did anything surprise you about how the season came back in December or the travel? Because I was kind of surprised. The schedule's not that regional as the rumors were out there. They played us, bro. Um, to be honest, we were we were not supposed to start this fast for obvious reasons. Um, they stole what we were told. It was like December's no chance. It's not possible. Yeah. To uh, December twenty second, game starting before Christmas. Before it was like Christmas or January or February. Now it's before Christmas. Seventy days for Bron and, and the Miami Heat players. I don't even know if, if Drogic's foot is healed. Like, that's how fast, like, this turnaround is. You got guys that got hurt or trying to recover. I broke my back, and I was thinking, like, my timeline in my head, I was like, perfect. Like, I got January, February. And then it's like, oh, no, and I got to speed up the recovery. I got to speed up this. I got to transition faster into contact. So it's just like certain teams, they're great. They ain't played in a year. For us, if you had an injury or if you're recovering, like Zach Collins, had an injury so like he was thinking he was going to be good right now the season gets moved up two months it's not like within the timeline you know what I mean so they just all these things that are kind of messing messing with certain players and certain teams but you just got to pray take care of your body and hope for the best uh, because as we've seen in the NFL like a lot of guys got hurt that sec that second week a quick turnaround how did how did how did it happen how did it, it just kind of happened it just I mean uh, it was a negotiation, but <laughs> it was like, uh, it didn't make sense to wait that long based on what we were presented. It was just like, damn, this is a lose lose. You know the what I mean? That money wasn't looking right. Not the money, the timing of everything, the Olympics, the, the viewership. Think about like, I don't even watch basketball in the summertime. You know what I mean? I play. So, like, all that stuff kind of goes into account. But, like, what I was thinking is that we would delay the season because of COVID. You yeah. know what I mean? Kind of wait it out. This is, like, the spike. This is as worse as – this is as bad as it's ever been. Yeah. Wait it out. You know, wait on the vaccine. That could come 10 months, 12 months, whatever. Like, go through those trials. See if they can figure out the rapid testing to where it's a five- or ten-minute turnaround. And then you can test people and maybe have fans in six months. But now we're going to start a season with no fans in three weeks. It's like it's – it's interesting, brother, but you know, I just, I just do my job. I show up. I'm just a. Just have they bully. laid out? I don't think it's been reported, but have they laid out at all for you guys preliminarily, like you know, the health protocols? Because obviously, it's gonna be a very different than the bubble situation. You guys traveling all over the country. I know what you know. Damn. Which is nothing. 